How do you choose to create art? Digital, traditional, or some crazy combination of the two? I want to know and you can let me know in the chat because we are doing this live. <laughs> Greetings people of the internet, I'm Scott with Cirkworks Art Labs. Welcome mad creators to the underground laboratory where we create robots, alien zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And sometimes we do that live, we're doing it live right now. This is sort of a, uh, the reaction to a video, I sort of did a test of this before last week. It was actually the last video I posted. Um, and just, just to let you know right off the bat, this isn't like the new format of the show, but I do want to start doing more of these live, uh, these live videos because they're kind of fun to do. We kind of intersperse these with some of the other content that you've seen me do before. So, so if you like this content, great, you're going to see more of it. But if you're not crazy about the live stuff, don't worry. We'll get back to doing some of the other stuff too, just to let you know. But anyway, so we are going to do a live drawing. I am going to do sort of a creature design today. Uh, maybe an alien. I don't know. We'll see. Um, we're we're going to draw that. And I want to talk about, while I'm doing that, I want to talk about my process. And the process I use is a little bit digital, a little bit... Um, traditional and why I choose to do that and maybe you know talk about what you guys how you guys choose to create your artwork because it hasn't always been that way uh, my artwork has sort of constantly been evolving from pretty much all traditional to to some digital and it's kind of flipped back and forth here and there and everything so I just want to talk about that and again I want to get your opinions on you know what you guys use uh, maybe you're doing sort of the same thing I am uh, maybe in the future I, you know who knows for all I know I may switch to all digital that's kind of that's kind of crazy for me to say to myself I don't know if that's gonna happen but uh, I just want to talk about it and talk about some of the benefits to each technique whether it's digital traditional or sort of a hybrid method so we're gonna get to that while I do this drawing so let's get to it let me know uh, your comments in the chat we are live I'll talk to you Hey everyone, uh, so yeah, we're back with another live stream. I want to thank everyone that's already in the chat. Hopefully we'll start filling up a little bit, but we got, yeah, we've already got, we got Tim, C. Kim, and Scott was in the chat, but he looks like he had to go. Um, but what I want to talk about today is uh, just uh, digital versus traditional. How do you guys work? Uh, I work sort of in both depending on what I'm doing but lately I've been doing a lot more digital and so I kind of want to know just what you guys prefer but not only that but go a little deeper and talk about you know what tools you use if you're working uh, traditionally or what you know software and everything you use if you work digitally as there's a lot of new options on the market especially with digital that weren't really available before so first off I want to I want to kind of talk about what I'm going to be drawing here uh, or since we're talking about tools I might as well talk about the software that I'm using so usually with now what I'm doing now that I'm getting into doing a little more digital sketching um, what I'm doing uh, hey double D and E how's it going hey Cameron how's it going um, I will just be calling out to the chat I'm gonna try to pay a little attention to the chat so if I kind of break my train of thought <laughs> if I forget what I was talking about hopefully you guys can get me back in the trap back on track but I really do want uh, you guys to um, uh, participate and I want this to be sort of a sort of a conversation I know you know you, I mean you guys in the chat and then I'll try to respond uh, via the, the you know the audio here um, so anyway so I'm doing uh, I, I'm, I'm starting to do more of my sketching uh, digitally and depending on what I'm working or where I'm working actually that kind of depends on the software so if I'm I'm here right now in the command center in the underground layer uh, so I've got pretty much you know you know my desktop set up here and uh, so when I do that I, I'm using clip studio pro um, is it Clip Studio? Yeah, Clip Studio Pro. I can't, or Clip Studio Paint. I always, I don't know why I always say. It. I think because it was Manga Studio Pro. I don't know, um, but Clip Studio Paint, and it's basically a software that is designed for creating comics. So, um, in addition to sketching, I also use this for, you know, lately for laying out comics. The last four-page comic uh, story that I did for the 100 Days of Making Comics anthology. 
Um, I did that, I penciled all that and laid everything out in Clip Studio. Now I'm still very, uh, I don't really know all the ins and outs of Clip Studio. I know I can do so many different things. Um, I just kind of, right now, I'm at the point where I just kind of learn as I go. Like, oh, I need to figure out how to do this and then I'll kind of learn. Um, and that's the way, I think, that's the way I, I learn software and I assume most people learn that way too. Um, rather than just basically studying and learning everything it does. Well, I think there's some people that do that too, the uh, more technical people that want to know all the ins and outs and how everything works. Um, I'm not really that way, but, but I've seen people do incredible stuff in Clip Studio that I don't even know how to do yet. But maybe, you know, as I get a little more familiar, I will learn that. Um, so I am Sauls, how's it going in the chat? We've got people jumping in, um, let's see. And uh, so Tim says, I do more digital, but a lot of traditional sketching and some watercolor. Yeah, oh man, uh, that is something that I've been, I keep saying it and I still haven't done it, is getting back into watercolor. Uh, like for this piece, I would have loved to do this piece in watercolor. I am going to finish this off in, uh, so even though I'm, I'm starting digital, like I said, I kind of have this sort of hybrid method and it depends on what I'm doing. Some things I'll work full digital, some things I'll work full traditional. I guess, I guess it kind of depends on the effect I'm getting. But what I want this, the final, this final piece to be is like a marker drawing. So I'm gonna use some alcoholic markers. I use all kinds of markers. Once I get to that point, I'll, I'll talk a little more about that and some things that are coming up in the channel as far as markers go and everything. Um, Tim, Tim also says I use Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop mostly. Yes, and I, will, I, I do too, but there are some, uh, some I want to talk about Affinity uh, coming up because that is really a, a real viable option to replace uh, Photoshop and Illustrator and Adobe because as you know, Adobe requires you to get the, the, you know, the subscription model and everything. Um, Affinity Designer has some really cool stuff. I haven't used it personally. I'm so kind of entrenched in the Adobe sort of ecosystem that it's kind of hard for me to break away, but you know, it can get expensive and um, I just like the fact that there's an option and also it sounds like the Infinity options are also right now on mobile as well, which I really want to look at because I'm trying to find, because I do a lot of vector stuff as well. Um, I won't be doing it here, but I do a lot of vector drawing. Um, that's probably, if you look at most of my finished work other than comics, that's what you're going to see. It's a lot of vector stuff. Um, and of course, it's that as well is sort of a hybrid thing where I do most of it in vector and then I'll go into Photoshop and I'll tweak it and everything. But I know uh, Affinity has just uh, launched their, is it, uh, I don't know, the latest version. They've, they've introduced uh, Infinity Publisher, I think it's called Publisher, which is sort of like their answer to um, InDesign, which I don't... I don't really use InDesign all that much because that's more for like copy heavy stuff like brochures and layouts which I try to avoid doing. I don't really like to do a lot of copy heavy stuff but it is it is great for designers for that to be um, an option now and it's my understanding that they also uh, released this thing called Studio Link which basically combines all three of their programs, the one that's similar to Photoshop, which I believe is just called Photo, the one that's similar to Illustrator, which I believe is Designer, and the one that's similar to InDesign, which is called Publisher. And you can work all of those, you can do all of those in the same, you know, in the same software, uh, which is really cool. And the fact that it is also mobile, that's, that's an even bigger plus. Now the way, from my understanding, the way Infinity Designer works is that you know, it's a one-time fee. So I think each one is, is around $50. I don't know if there's, now that there's three, if there's like a bundle package or whatever. Um, but that's for, once you get that, you have the license for, you know, for as far as I know, for forever. I don't know if they, if when they come out like major updates, if they'll, if they will make a new version that you have to purchase or whatever. But compared to about that much per month <laughs> for Adobe, I mean, that's pretty awesome. and. I, to me, the only problem, uh, the only reason why I probably wouldn't switch is because working with clients, uh, the uh, industry standard is still Adobe. Like, I know, I was reading a post from a friend of mine, Daniel Davis, who, who runs Steam Crow and Monster Scouts. If you're not familiar with that, just Google Steam Crow or Monster Scouts and, uh, and you'll see his awesome work. But 
because he's doing all basically his own company. He's not working with clients. He doesn't need to deliver certain files that have to be in, you know, in that Adobe format. And I don't know if Affinity Designer and stuff can open in Adobe. If it can, that would be awesome because I really need a good mobile option to do vector work, which and that I can send to clients. And if I can do that, that would be awesome. But um, but he's been able to kind of switch all the way over to Affinity Designer because um, because he doesn't need to deliver that stuff to clients. And I think especially you know if you're starting out, if you can if you can drop like. You know, 50 bucks. If you just if you just need the photo, uh, you know, Affinity Photo, or if you want Affinity Designer or whatever, that's 100 bucks. And I think this, I think the mobile option is separate, but I think it's only like 20 dollars. And and again, that's not a subscription. That's you get that. And from what I've seen, and I haven't looked into it much, but but people are like talking about it. It's kind of making me want to dive a little deeper into Affinity Designer. So uh, so I will get back to the chat in a minute. Um, oh yeah. So so Tim says uh, Inkscape is free for Vector. That is yes, that is true. And I'll get into talking about some other free options. But really, I think I you know I I haven't used Inkscape. But I think if, if you're kind of, if you, you can kind of, you know, invest at least that extra like $50, from my understanding, I think Infinity might be a better option. And it's not so crazy expensive that it's just, you know, it's not like Photoshop where it's really, that there really is a bar for entry into like, into the Adobe uh, products and everything. But uh, before I get back into talking about that, I guess I should switch over to talk a little bit about the drawing that I'm doing. So uh, this is sort of a creature design. I wanted something like, I guess sort of a desert dweller. And then I recently saw the Aladdin movie, not because it was like calling to me, like I had to go see it, but I'm in this situation where usually I'm dropping my son off uh, to a class and then I've got like two hours to kill because it's too, it doesn't make sense for me to drive back. So sometimes I'll go see a movie, sometimes I'll go to a coffee shop and work on stuff. Um, which also leads me into what I'll be talking about is sort of my mobile uh, design setup. But anyway, so I've been just been like, oh, what movies are shown? So I went and saw Aladdin, and I know it's got a lot of negative press from what I heard, but it wasn't that bad. I don't know if it's a movie that necessarily had to be made. Um, as far as these Disney live action, I don't know. I mean, they're not bad, they're good, but the, you know, I kind of prefer the originals. Um, I did really, out of all of them that I've seen, I really did like the Jungle Book. I thought that was really awesome, uh, just the effects and everything. But you know, but the Latin was very cool as far as visual spectacle, and I think uh, for all the flack that Will Smith got, I think he did. I think he was probably probably the best part of that. And I don't want to get into just talking about this movie, but but I was sort of inspired to do sort of an Arabian style character, and I thought sort of like a, like I don't know what they're called, like a horned lizard or something like that, alien, um, that can kind of fit in that desert environment. I thought would, that would be kind of cool. So that's kind of the look that I'm going for with this. Um, but anyway, so let me go back to the chat. Uh, let's see. You can still import, export Adobe files. Infinity reads them nicely. Uh, I, that's from I am Saul. So I have a question. Can you do the reverse? Can I open? Can I open Infinity files in like an Infinity Designer file into uh, into Illustrator? Even even if it's not editable, because if I can send that to a client and they can look at it, um, well, actually, a lot. Sometimes a lot of my clients do have do like to make tweaks and stuff and do work within that. So that might not work for me. Um, but if there is a way that I could convert that, like if I could, yeah, if I could bring an Infinity Designer file into Illustrator, that would be pretty amazing. Or, you know, maybe I, you know, if I could, the few clients that, that I have that kind of work that way, maybe I can convince them to do, uh, to, to get a copy of, uh, you know, of Infinity to, to open that stuff and maybe make edits. The, the, the other thing is, I don't know, it seems like a lot of the interfaces, they try to make, make it similar to, like, I know, like with Clip Studio, it's, there are a lot of similarities as far as the layout and everything to like a Photoshop and everything. And some of the, some of the terms are the same. So if I need to transform something, it's called transform. It's not called something else or whatever. So that's really helpful to me because I'm so used to working in Adobe. It, like the first version, there were, was an earlier version of Clip Studio back when it was Manga Studio before the current one, where it was just, it was a lot 
it was a lot more different and it was hard for me to figure everything out. So <laughs> I don't want to relearn the whole software, but if it's similar enough, then maybe I can adapt. Um, so anyway, uh, so let's see what else we got. Um, I think the Adobe Suite is not too bad if you're making money. Yeah, that that is true. I, I mean, and I, I it's not, I, I am able to afford, it is an investment and it, it does definitely, for me it pays off because I can get client work doing that. But right now, also the fact that, I know Adobe is working on this, but they don't really have a viable mobile option. And I don't work a lot mobile. Uh, I mean, I don't do a lot of mobile, uh, you know, like vector work, but um, but I'd like to have that option that I can use because I've got this iPad and I'd like to be able to use the iPad um, and uh, you know and do some vector stuff too. Um, even if it's very simple, like like one of my clients, it's basically I I do my sketching in uh, like in Manga Studio. I import it into Illustrator, and then because the deliverable has to deliverable has to be vector, but it can't just be converted to vector like like a like a trace outline or tr whatever that command is where you can you can import like artwork and then trace it because it just doesn't it doesn't do the drawing justice. Some sometimes it'll work, but but I need to really be able to kind of trace over and and. Uh, in vector so what I've been using is the blob tool which works really well as far as drawing uh, like a freehand kind of vector style sometimes when you round corners it sort of fills things in which is a, a little bit of pain but I can go in and tweak that a little bit so for me that's what I use what I've been using for this one client but if I could do that if I could do that mo on mobile that would be awesome um, so anyway uh, let's see uh, so I am Saul says yes because these various export files uh, EXT PSD okay so from my understanding what you're saying is that you can import infinity designer files into Illustrator if that's the case that would be awesome um, so uh, uh, C Kim says oh, I think we're responding to something somebody else says I gotta I'm falling behind here I gotta see what other people are, are talking about um, but Debbie Renault says I do mostly digital but this is due to due to having small kids when I get a chance to sketch traditionally which is usually at night shortly before after going to bed yeah and that's that's like super important I know my, my kids are, are pretty much grown my youngest is gonna be a freshman in, in high school I can't believe it um, <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I definitely, I definitely remember like when my kids were younger, it was like, when do I have time to do this? And it is definitely easier just to, to boot up a computer and just go right into it than it is to get all your traditional art supplies out, set everything up, and then kind of break it down. I mean, a sketch, I guess, is not too bad because it's just a pencil and paper, but depending on what you're doing. So I definitely know what you're talking about there. Um, yeah, and Tim says he draws in Adobe Illustrator. Yeah, I mean, and it kind of depends on what I'm, what the look I'm going for. Sometimes I will use that blob tool to go freehand, but a lot of times I will use like sort of the pen tool and use the, the Bezier curves. And because a lot of times when I draw mechs and things like that, I want it to be super technical. So I will use that for. If you've seen any of my finished work, like on my store, some of my prints, you'll see it's the line work is pretty pretty technical um, but anyway so back to the drawing I'm just kind of cleaning up I, I created another layer and I'm kind of going over my rough sketch and cleaning things up so now you'll start to see a little more of that detail coming through um, but I guess um, I should talk hold on I'm gonna get a drink here I guess I should talk a little bit more about I've talked some of the softwares that I use and everything but I should talk some more about what, when I do do digital or traditional, I always flip those. Like if you watch my videos, there's so many times where you'll hear me say digital when I mean traditional and vice versa. So hopefully it doesn't get too confusing because I don't know, I just, I think, I honestly think that I'm, I'm a little dyslexic because I do that constantly. But anyway, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Um, so uh, as far as uh, some of the tools that I use, uh, uh, traditional tools that I use. Um, of course, you know, I've got a sketchbook. I don't use that that often. Um, I think the last time I really used it, uh, you 
you know, sort of on a regular was when I was doing Inktober. I did all those sketching and all that sketching in a sketchbook. But I've always preferred to just draw on like loose pieces of paper um, and uh, or Bristol or whatever, it's just so I have like individual pieces. So if I ever do want to sell it, I can do so. It's a little harder with the sketchbook. I guess you could either set, sell the whole sketchbook or rip out a page. Although I've never, I don't really put a lot of my original stuff on the market yet. Part, part of that is because I'm holding on to it because I need to like, uh, like, um, uh, what's the word I'm talk, thinking about? Um, I don't know, just, you know, photograph it and everything and uh, archive it, I guess is what I'm looking for. And uh, just because I do want to create an art book, so I want to, I, I got to get all, I, I need to get good quality scans and everything of that stuff before I do sell it. And maybe once I publish that, uh, that book, then I can start selling those pieces because that might even, you know, create a little more demand for a piece that's actually in a book. Like, oh, I love that piece. I might want the real, want the actual original. So, so at some point down the road, I might want to sell stuff. So that's kind of uh, one of the reasons why I tend to work on like Bristol or lately, um, I think Jake Parker uses, uh, it's like a hammer mill. Uh, it's, it's like a sort of cardstock, um, but it's, um, it's, uh, I think hammer mill digital color stock. Uh, I bought like a big uh, like ream of 11, I don't know if it's called a ream or whatever, but just a, a thing of 11 by 17 and sometimes I'll, I can draw on that. Like if you want to do full pages, it's a little, it's not as um, heavy as like a Bristol, but man, it's got a really nice feel. Usually I like working on, I think cold press is the one that's a little rough as opposed to hot press, but this is a little smooth. And I'm kind of digging the way the ink goes onto it. Actually, when I print this out, when I color it, that's what I'm going to use for this. Um, and it's it's relatively expensive because you can buy this whole ream of it, and then if you're especially if you're cutting in half, or you can you can actually buy eight and a half, eight and a half by eleven too if you want. But it is some really good stuff. I might have to add that to the links. I have on my on my website. I do have a link to a lot of the the tools that I use. Uh, I think it was Marshall Lee. Hopefully, I'm not. Uh, mixing up who told me this, but they had mentioned that there there wasn't any of my digital stuff, so I need to add that stuff too, so people, if they're familiar. But there's things on there like my Cintiq. I don't think my model of Cintiq, it's an older one, so I don't think it's available anymore. But I also, you know, I'm, again, I'm kind of going back and forth, but for, for digital, I use the Cintiq as well. That's kind of what I'm what I'm drawing on as far as the surface. But I but we'll, we'll probably get into some tablets and things like that or other digital techniques because, or digital tools, because that's the great thing with things like uh, Infinity Designer coming out giving you an option to uh, Photoshop which is super expensive these other tablets coming out giving you an option to uh, to like Cintiqs which I totally stand by Cintiqs or uh, by basically anything uh, Wacom or Wacom however you want to pronounce it great product and they last and they're just a great product, and I would, and but they're but they can be they're definitely expensive. So the fact that there's all these different options coming out, and I'm kind of curious what some of you guys use um, as far as tablets or, or whatever, that would be interesting to know. Um, and you know the iPad. So far, the iPad is is I'm I'm liking working on the iPad, but it can't depending on what model you get. It's it's very it's can be super expensive and iPad or Apple is not known to make things that last. I mean, it, what, even if the physical, uh, even if you don't break it or if that the physical device lasts, uh, their their software is designed so or their operating system is designed so that older versions just will not function. Which you know, so you know it's it's hard to make an investment on something that you know is probably not going to last. So that's a little what makes a little bit what makes me nervous about. Um, about using you know the iPad, so uh, C Kim says uh, I use Procreate. Uh, started with Clip Studio, so yeah, Clip Studio has the ha does have the mobile app, and I'm considering maybe getting that because I like it so much. But the but but it's it's also a subscription model. So if I get Clip Studio for mobile, I really need to make sure I use it because I'm going to be paying for that every month, um, and you know. And I think maybe two or three months already adds up to what you would normally probably pay for um, Clip Studio. Assuming that a lot of time, when I got my Clip Studio, I got it on sale, so it was like half price or something. And if you wait around, you can find those deals. Um, but a lot of people swear by Procreate, and I've seen a lot of people do amazing stuff on Procreate. Um, 
I don't do, basically all I do on the iPad is sketching. I don't get into, you know, coloring and all that stuff, which I know you can do amazing stuff in Procreate. But as far as just drawing in uh, Procreate, I just don't like the way, I don't like the way the brush engine works. And maybe I just need to work a little more or adjust some things or something, but right out the gate, just starting it up, I just don't like it. Whereas when I'm working mobile, what I'm using is, is Autodesk Sketch. Is it Autodesk Sketch or Autodesk Sketchbook? I'm not sure, but um, so anyway, so I'm, now we're getting more into, I printed everything out and I'm going to be inking this thing. Uh, we'll talk a little, oh, thank you, Kim. I see Kim. I appreciate it. That's a, I think that's the first super chat I've ever got. So thank you. That is so awesome. I really do appreciate that. That is awesome. Um, so yeah, I totally even forgot that that was a thing. So uh, see Kim says, I love the channel, mate. Keep up the grind. So I'm just curious where you're at, uh, C. Kim, uh, just because you said, mate, I wonder if you're in uh, Europe or, or, you know, so I'm just, just curious. And also let me know if you're male or female or, or whatever, just so I can uh, attach a pronoun if I need to, because it's that's the weird thing. You never know what to say and uh, you don't want to say the wrong thing. So anyway, um, so what was I getting to? Um, yeah, I'm kind of all over the place, but let me let me kind of go back into the chat here. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, we got a lot going on here. Um, so I am Salt says. Besides the iPad, I still use my laptop with old school Wacom tablet. Really want a Cintiq, but they are they are pricey. And I like when I bought my Cintiq, I did buy it used on on eBay. And like I said, you're 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 you'll probably be pretty you know. I think if you uh, even a used Wacom product, um, if you if you get one, chances are it's it's still going to work pretty well because they're 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 really built to last. So um, I would I would consider if you're thinking about making an investment in, in Cintiq, look at a used one because I I got mine and I love it and it's so far it's just amazing and it, I did get it used for about half the price of what I would pay normally because they're like you know they're like cars once you get them off the lot they drop in value so. Um, Let's see what else. Um, let's see. Is it is this is the one I read before? Um, let's see. Okay, no. Van illustration. Being a parent, working in smaller sketchbooks or my Surface Pro is how I get more work done lately. Though just just traditional in my little book. Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, Surface Pro. That was one of the options I was looking at. I'm curious. You know, that may have been a better option than the iPad because um, because. I'm guessing that uh, maybe Surface Pro might last a little longer, as opposed to, like I said, Apple has it has an, you know, because I think people that are Apple fanboys or Apple fangirls, they're the kind of people that want the latest thing once it comes out. So, so that kind of that mindset is like, well, once the new thing comes out, I don't want the old thing anymore. But I'm not. That's not me. I, I, if I make an investment in something, I want to use it for a while and get my money's worth out of it. So. Um, Let's see. Okay, so here's one. Uh, Double D and E says, I currently have Krita. I'm not sure what that is. I'm curious. I'll have to look that up because it's free and convenient to use uh, a Wacom tablet to, to draw digital with. It's not fancy, but it gets the job done. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. Um, so uh, Tim Gillette says, it's 50% off now. Clips, okay, so Clip Studio. If you're watching this, evidently it is 50% off now. And if you do comics, especially digital, uh, you know, I know I have some friends like I know Gazbot. He works in Photoshop because that's what he's always done. So it's kind of like he's so used to that. It's kind of like what I was saying. Like it's hard. It would be hard for me to switch over from Adobe to uh, Infinity just because. I mean, depending on how similar it is. But there's that learning curve. So he's so used to working in Photoshop. But I'm telling you. Uh, Creating comics in because I kind of start. I, I, I mean, I've always used Photoshop, but I never did comics in them. Um, so starting off in Clip Studio, I mean, it is just light years ahead of what you can do in Photoshop, especially just drawing, sketching, and things like that, or inking, or pretty much everything. I mean, it is designed for making comics. So if you if you feel like you want to make that leap from Photoshop, I would I would say that the investment in the time to kind of learn a new software is worth it because they're, they're, to me there's nothing uh, nothing quite like you know all the tools and things you have because this this program is specifically designed for 
you know, making comics, where Photoshop was designed as a photo editing software. And since then, they've added more tools and people use it for different things, coloring and all that. But, you know, for, for my money, you know, Clip Studio Pro is the way to go, or Paint, I, I think it's good, is the way to go for, uh, for that. So, uh, so C. Kim says, 40-year-old Canadian, oh, okay, Canadian, uh, been tattooing for 20 years and recently went back to school for an illustration degree comics, uh, comic book focus. Oh, so that's awesome. So, yeah, um, very awesome. Yeah, it's cool because I, I don't know that I've seen, and he's a male. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, so, and I haven't seen you in the chat, so it's always cool to see new people that, that are digging my stuff, and, and like I said, I can't I can't appreciate the uh, Super Chat more. That is, that's super awesome. A while back, I, I, I was trying to get something going. When Super Chat was first coming out, I was trying to do something where I would do like a live drawing, because just, just full disclosure, right now what you're seeing, um, the video of my drawing is pre-recorded, but I am live talking to you guys, just, just to let you guys know. Um, that just gives me a chance to kind of pay a little more attention to the chat and everything. Um, and then it also allows me to kind of show the preview, the, 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 um, the artwork in the thumbnail and everything before I go live. Um, and I kind of just, I did one of these before and I like the format, so I'm probably gonna continue to do that. But I was gonna do, I, what I wanted to do, or I tried to do once was just start with a blank page and then try to get people to make suggestions via Super Chat as far as what they wanted me to draw. Um, so I don't know if I can get if I can get the channel growing a little more and everything if I can get more people into doing that super chat I definitely would like to do sort of like uh, a request live drawing type thing so okay so van illustration if you want to use Photoshop or Illustrator on the go Surface Pro is fantastic oh okay. yeah because I totally forgot that Surface Pro is it's not like a tablet I mean it's like a tablet but it runs Windows and that's awesome so so yeah I mean and I, I forgot that that was one of the options so I don't know why I opted for the iPad after that because that probably would have been a lot, a lot better so um, but yeah um, but you, uh, let's see. Uh, personally, I like the feel of the Apple Pencil more than okay, or more than the Surface Pro Pen. So that's kind of the thing with all of these tools. They all have their pros and their cons. So you just kind of have to weigh those options. So that's why something like this, where we can talk about, um, you know, the different tools we use, and people can take that uh, for what it's worth. Whether they say, "Well, I like what you're saying, but that one feature isn't really important to me personally," so. And that's kind of what I did when I was when I was deciding on what tablet to buy and everything. So, wish Microsoft had uh, had to keep up with Wacom Pencil Tech instead of trying uh, the Ntrig thing they went at, went with. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with that, but um, yeah, the Apple Pencil I do like a lot, and I've got like the newer one. I don't know if it's any different than the first generation, um, but yeah, I'm really and I'm liking the chart. The though, see. <sighs> There, when I was going to buy my iPad, the first thing I was looking at um, was uh, trying to, you know, I, I wanted to, I was just, you know, I wanted to get something cheap, you know, or not cheap, but I, I didn't want like the iPad Pro. So when iPad said that they now had pencil support for just the basic model, the newer one, the 2018 or 19 version, that's what kind of got me looking at it. And then one thing after another I kind of kept upgrading and then I was like well I'll maybe I'll get an iPad Pro but I'll get the previous version because I could save a lot of money that way and then I kind of saw I didn't like the way the pin connected where because it looked like it could break off because it kind of just you know it, it stuck right into like the power supply and it's kind of this weird pin hanging out and it just I didn't like that so that's kind of what made me move up to the latest iPad because it's got this magnetic thing that it, you just pop right in there and it charges magnetically, which is pretty cool. But I did <laughs> pay a lot, and they kept getting me, you know, like, like, oh, well, it's only a little bit more if you do this, or a little bit more when you do that. And by that time, it was like, oh man, what am I really dropping this much money on this thing? Um, all right, so what else do we got? Uh, let's see. Van illustration longevity though I'm not sure which would last longer I think Apple actually supports older models especially iPads so uh, here we got is it Nefitali I always wonder how to pronounce your name so hopefully I pronounced that right but I, you're always in the chat so I definitely appreciate all the support and everything um, I actually prefer working traditionally because it's 
just easier for my eyes and I like when I see it, it on paper more. Yeah, I mean, I'm there too. I mean, I'm just now starting to do more. And as you can see right now, what I'm doing is traditional. It's sort of, I did the sketch uh, digitally, I printed it out and now I'm kind of, do I still, to me, I still like inking traditional. I don't know if I'll get to the point where, you know, for at least for the comic book stuff. Um, again, a lot of my line work and sort of my prints and posters and things that I design, that's all done in Illustrator. But for comic book stuff where I want the very line weight, I don't want it to be super clean like, like, like I do in Illustrator. I want it to be a little more organic. I definitely still uh, digitally um, do uh, inks and everything. And I don't, I don't know if I'll ever get to the point where I move away from that. We'll see. Um, I've done a little, I've, I've tested a little bit of inking in Clip Studio and I do like their sort of, again, same thing as their sketching. I do like their brush engine. So, um, so yeah, uh, let's see what else we got. Um, see, Kim says they switch tech on their pencil around Surface 3. They use the Wacom tech for their pen. Then, sw oh, so they, sw yeah, because I don't know why you would switch from, from Wacom unless you just want your own proprietary thing, which, you know, that's kind of, <laughs> that's, the, that's the problem with Apple. They want everything to be proprietary, and it gets really, it's, it's not fun when you're working on a, on a PC at home, like, or whatever, and then you have an uh, Apple device, and you're trying to make them talk to each other, or trying to get something off of one onto the other. They do not want you to do that, so they don't, do not make it easy. So I am constantly, constantly cursing Apple because of that. So um, it is, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm not, a, there's a lot of things that, I, there, there's things I like about Apple, but there's a lot more that I think I don't like. So they, they, they're they constantly making me very upset. <laughs> but, it's, you know, some of the, some of the good stuff is like, well, I guess I got to deal with it because this iPad is kind of cool other than that. So, um, uh, see, Kim says, I love the digital. It streams and works and, and, and uh, it streams and workflow and it's faster. Lots of people are doing exactly what you did. Starting off digital and moving tradition or then going tradition or starting up. Oh, so you're saying a lot of people start off uh, digitally and go traditional. That's that's kind of good to hear because me it's kind of obviously the opposite because when I was started drawing there really wasn't any kind of digital options. Um, so that is kind of cool. But I think yeah I, I think I think if you can learn the techniques I think you can switch back and forth from one to the other. You just no matter what you use you don't want it to be a crutch. I think uh, because there, there might be a time where you you just don't have like say power goes down or something you just can't you know, work digitally, you want that option. So it's good good to be able to switch back and forth. And then definitely some of the pluses with digital would be you can save a lot of time. I found, I found one of the things I find in the sketching phase, um, just the fact that you can resize things, you can undo things, you can do all that stuff. It saves a lot of time. So I'm hoping that's really going to come in handy when I get back to working on my comic book, um, Young and the Dead, which actually the fourth issue is now available on my website. So I'll do a little pitch for that. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think I think hopefully I can be a little more productive and get those books out uh, sooner if I'm doing the sketching uh, uh, digitally because I just think it's going to save me a lot of time. So so uh, yeah, that's one of the things. Um, but I think I was uh, so I guess I should talk a little more about traditional tools. Right now I'm using I think this is a, a food a pen. I don't know if it's I don't no this isn't the Kiritaki. I have a Kiritaki. Uh, brush pen. I also have a Pintel pocket brush um, that I use for these things. Um, these are really good when you when you like take them to like uh, like a signing or something like that. If you're doing some some live sketch, and that's the other thing. That's the other plus for traditional. Obviously, if you're gonna go like if I go to like an in store signing. Um, I mean, I guess you could bring an iPad and sketch then, but you don't really have a way. There's no way to like print that out and then sketch it or whatever. Um, so it's, you know, you know, you want to be able to also uh, be able to do stuff traditionally so that you can do, you know, sketch cards or, or sketches for people or just, just because you can sell that original work, which, you know, with this, even though I did traditionally and then printed it out and now I'm doing, you know, so I think there's still some value in the original inks and you know and the colors when I start applying the colors and everything. So, 
So that that's definitely an option. So you still have something that you can sell, but I, I still think the fact that if you can do everything traditionally, I think that's going to make the value of that finished piece a little better. So, you know, so I'm not, you know, the thing that bothers me is when I hear people that are, you know, not just as a preference, because people will be like, you know, I, I do all digital and I prefer digital, but it's the people that are like, well, yeah, you're, if you're not working, working digital, then you're doing it wrong or vice versa. I mean, um, I, I think art is art and I think, you know, whatever tools you use, I mean, to create art, that's sort of your prerogative and that's, you know, there's not one right way to, to do art. So, um, I, I kind of like to, oh, thank, thank you, Kim, C. Kim, that's awesome, another super chat. Um, if I laser print line, uh, we're, and I'll have to... I'll have to figure what the conversion is from, oh, you know what? I wasn't even paying attention when I asked where you were that, that the currency is coming up as uh, Canadian currency. So I should have, that should have been my first clue, but I'm not always that astute. So um, if I laser print line work, what was done digitally? Should I be able to color it with alcohol-based uh, markers like Copics? Okay. Um, if you're, I don't, if you're, when you say laser print, if you, this is my understanding because a lot of times, like one thing that I do, like this, this I'm just going to go over the original inks, which will should work fine for the alcohol-based markers. Um, I also use another marker, which is the 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 um, ad markers by Chart Pack, which aren't technically alcohol; they're xylene. Um, those are my favorite markers; they blend way better than anything. But sometimes you have to watch them with uh, actual ink. But in answer to your question, so if you've ever seen any of the videos I do where I do like a side-by-side -side marker drawing, like if I, usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll get an off-brand marker and I will, I'll, I'll print two, two uh, ink drawings out and I'll side-by-side -side use one and the other and compare that other marker to Copics. Um, and what I do for that is I take it to like a print shop and have it printed out on like a, a Xerox machine or a photocopy machine which is a, la a laser, not an inkjet, but a laser print. So if you can print it out on a laser print, then you can go over it with alcohol-based markers. If you're printing it out on an inkjet, it, it, will, it will smudge. Um, so so the, if you have a laser printer, which most people don't, most people, uh, their home printers are inkjets. Um, if you have a laser printer, then you can print it. Otherwise, I would recommend taking it to like, you know, whatever you have. I don't know if you have Kinko's in Canada or, or whatever copy shops you have and just have, have your prints, uh, you know, have some photocopies made. And those, those are fine for going over with alcohol-based markers. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. But yeah, uh, the, the ink, I found that the, the um, printing it out on the um, ink, uh, like, what am I saying? The, the uh, what is it? The I, I just said it. Now I can't remember the just whatever that man. I am just totally losing my train of thought. Inkjet, inkjet, um, inkjets will probably bleed if you're trying to print it out on an inkjet. So, um, but anyway, so kind of back to some of the some of the tools, the traditional tools I use. Obviously, you know, for the when I am doing sketching. Um, I prefer, I've been doing, I used to use, one thing I always, laser printer is the key, hoping staples can print on Bristol. Oh yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah, I don't know if they can. I, I've always wondered that if you took, even if they don't have it in stock, if you took something there and asked them if they could print on it, if they would do that or not. I, it might depend on how, how friendly you are to them or how well you know them, because maybe it's not policy, but it, maybe if you get the right guy or girl over there and they're like, yeah, I can do that. So, yeah, I'm not too sure about that. Um, but, but so usually what I do is I just have them print on whatever their heaviest cardstock is. Uh, again, that's not going to be quite as good as Bristol. But the other thing, the, the one thing that I would, uh, and I have printed, I have done sketches on Bristol. But just so you know, Bristol will soak up those markers. So if you're constantly using um, Bristol paper, uh, you're going to go through your markers a lot faster because it, it will soak up that. I mean, the marker paper is ideal for kind of keeping the longevity of your markers because it doesn't soak them up. I just don't really, even though they're better for mixing, uh, the marker paper is excellent for mixing. I just really don't like, I'm not crazy about the look. And there may be different kinds. The kind I, I, I've i used in the past was sort of this semi, 
not totally opaque, not totally transparent, somewhere in between paper, like marker paper. And again, great for mixing, but it wasn't really great for, the, I didn't like the way the colors looks. But if you print it on like a smooth, um, a smooth, just a, a cardstock, it won't soak it up as much as Bristol. So I'm not sure exactly what, what you know, the reason why you're wanting wanting to use the Bristol. I mean, I guess if you're using a super smooth, smooth super hot press Bristol, um, it might be similar to um, what you would get with like a, like a printout of um, like on cardstock or whatever. Um, oh no, <laughs> that, uh, so C. Kim says, thank you so much. Sorry if I stole the chat uh, for, for a bit. No, but I mean, that's the whole idea of the super, super chat. So if you, if you definitely want your question to be heard, and I am trying to get to every question, but if you definitely want to get that known, I mean, you drop the super chat. So, um, so that, that's what, that's what you get when you actually drop a little bit of cash in there, you get a little more attention. So, <laughs> so no problem at all. Anyone that wants that much attention, um, I'm more than happy to give it to you. Uh, let's see. So, uh, so there was a question from Cameron I kind of missed. So I, Cameron Dillon says, I like your method with digital sketching and traditional inking. I think I'm going to try that a little bit, but what would you do if you wanted to color it digitally? Okay, so if I wanted to color it digitally, um, I've been speaking a lot about Manga Studio Pro, or yeah, not again, um, uh, Clip Studio Paint. Okay, Clip Studio Paint. And from my understanding, you can, and if you have Clip Studio Paint, paint again, it is a lot less expensive than uh, Photoshop. You can do, I've seen people do amazing stuff. I think if you were watching, if you saw, uh, we had Karen Lewis Bonfiglio on um, Artcasters a while back, and she did that awesome cover, or not cover, but poster for the 100 Days of Making Comics Anthology, um, where she took everyone's characters and kind of put them together. Um, that was, uh, she did that whole thing, I think, and colored everything and did that all in Clip Studio. So Clip Studio is definitely an option. I'm more used to coloring in Photoshop. So rather than kind of getting to the point where I learned that, um, my personal, not preference, but what I'm used to would be to color in Photoshop. But there's so many different options. If you don't have Photoshop, like I said, look into Infinity Designer if you're willing to drop like 50 bucks as opposed to $50 a month on, on like Adobe. Or maybe it's less if you just want one program. I'm not sure. Um, or maybe it's more if you if you <laughs> you know I, I haven't looked at what they, if they've raised the prices or not. It just kind of gets taken out. So so now we've got the um, now we've got the the ink drawing and hopefully they give it enough time to dry because you do want to give a little time to dry before you go over to markers. Um, and again, this this the drawing here is pre-recorded, so I did wait a little bit. Um, and now I'm going to go over with some markers. But uh, but back before I talk about kind of what some of the markers I'm using, um, the uh, if I was going to do digital, you know, just whatever you're more comfortable with. I mean, I'm sure all these I forgot. Like even I I don't I've never used like GIMP. I know that's free. I think there's some other options. I think there's something if it's still around. I haven't heard anything about it lately. But there was something called Photo P. And it's it's spelled like the like pea like the vegetable, and if you if you Google that, I believe that what I think it's open source or it's free. I don't know if it's open source, but I think it's free, and it's it's basically Photoshop, but it's but it's um, web based. So you're kind of working. You got to log online and, and work on it there on their you know sort of platform. But I think you can do pretty much anything you need to do in Photoshop. So depending on what you have, I think any photo editing kind of software, I think it would be fine for coloring. Um, eventually I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do a whole series of creating comics and I will get to, to coloring and kind of my technique for using that um, and kind of how to separate the line art and do all that kind of stuff. Um, but just to turn our attention back to markers. Um, so for me, uh, like I mentioned before, my favorite marker are the Chart Pack Ad Markers. Uh, I prefer working sort of with the brush tip as opposed to the chisel. A lot of the cheaper ones are chisel tip, but I, I know that um, Ahuhu, which is a very inexpensive brand of marker, is going, before the end of the month, they're going to be releasing their brush tip, so I'm going to snag those and I'm going to review them. I also have... Um, uh, Spectrum Noir, who I've reviewed their markers, and I use those are really big in sort of the crafting industry. And back when I was designing like rubber stamps and things, everyone used Spectrum Noir, so I got I got like a, a ton of those, um, and I use those. But they had the chisel tip as well. Um, but they are sending me; they've got a version called the 
Illustrator, their Illustrator line, and they've just kind of, I guess they're relaunching it, they've made some changes. So they're sending me some of those, I'm gonna review those as well. And those are definitely less expensive than the Copics. Um, the, uh, back to sort of the, the Charpac, Charpac ad markers, they're a little harder to find, you can find them online. They're, they're not super cheap, that's what I'm using right now. Um, and they've, they don't have a brush tip, it's sort of this weird hybrid chisel tip, and it's only one side. But you can see the markers are a little bigger. They hold a lot more ink. I don't. I can't remember if they're refillable. Um, that is definitely a plus. But they're def they're cheaper than Copics, and they're a little different. They're not alcohol. They're xylene. So you got sometimes you have to depending on what you're working on, you have to kind of watch. I think I think the xylene markers. If I'm not mistaken, I think you can go over an inkjet with xylene markers. With these chart pack ad markers I'm not positive I don't remember but um, but it's but they don't work as well on laser so you kind of have to watch that but they seem to work pretty well with the uh, I don't notice any smudging off of like the original inks and everything but the, these are my favorite um, uh, definitely uh, Copic is is the industry standard a lot of people use Copics they're just so expensive but for me, I you'll see right here, this is an Ahuhu that I'm using. So I just use whatever. I don't, you know, I'm not like a marker snob. I don't care, you know. I mean, certain ones are better than others. I was, before I did a video, and I was sort of giving a pretty decent recommendation to the Michaels brand, the uh, the Art Artist Loft. Um, but on further working with them, and I still, I just bought a pack of grays just the other day, even though, um, what I'm going to tell you <laughs> is that a lot of the markers, they just start, the brush tips just start to fray and they become pretty much unusable as brush tips. Um, so the quality isn't great, but if you can get that coupon, that 50% off coupon, you know, I can go out and buy a pack of like grays or whatever. And if they start to fray, then that's all right because I didn't spend a whole lot of money on them. Um, uh, again, I'm really excited that Huhu is coming out with the brush tip. The problem with the Huhu is they're not refillable and you can't buy like individual markers. You have to buy a big pack, but the big pack is like super cheap for what, what you're getting. So I'm anxious to test those out. These are an older brand. They don't even think, I don't even think they make anymore, but this is the, these are the, the Pantone Trya and I've got tons of these and tons of refills. Um, they are, they're not, that, this is before kind of brush tips became the thing. So they're sort of a bullet tip and a chisel tip. And sometimes I will use the chisel. I mean, depending on what you're using it for, I know a lot of lettering artists will use that because you can kind of get that calligraphy look to it and everything. But I'm not super, I'm not sold on any, I mean, I can definitely tell you what markers are better than others, but you know, it doesn't hurt to just get whatever you can. You know, if you, if, if say if your favorite color, if you have colors that you use all the time, maybe invest in some Copics for that. If you have some other one or just kind of, and then just buy some extra ones of like a hoo hoo or the cheaper ones and just kind of mix and match them because they're all compatible. Even the xylene, like here with the ad marker and the, and the, and the alcohol based, which I assume xylene is sort of a form of alcohol, it's just a little different and it's better for mixing. But um, but they're, they're all compatible, so you don't have to just like, oh, I only use Copics or I only use this or that. Because I'll get people that comment on my videos and they're like, they're like definitely sold on one brand and they're like, yeah, this is way better than Copic or this or Copic is way better than that. And you know, to me, it doesn't matter. To me, just use whatever you can and use them together. Um, so that's kind of my, my take on on uh, you know mark using markers and everything. So let me get back to the chat. Let's see what we got. Uh, C Kim says to be honest, I'm making uh, making a mini comic, and I was thinking about doing a cover on Bristol. The inside will be black and white. Yeah. Um, so you oh so you're you're planning on doing uh, like full color or just kind of adding because I know like actually the first mini comic I ever put out back then I don't even think they were called mini comics. They were called we called them ash cans. But I just printed it out and then I kind of went over some of them with just a splash of color just to kind of make it pop. Because like it, it was just the logo. So I just went kind of over the logo. It didn't take long and it's definitely cheaper than, you know, printing that out as a color copy rather than um, black and white. So I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about doing or doing, or doing like a sketch cover. Because I know a lot of, you know, I know with the, the, you know, your standard comics, a lot of people are going for those sketch covers. So, um, yeah, I would, that, in that case, uh, Bristol would definitely be, I, I think, a way to go because um, if you sort of, if you're okay with sort of drawing on, you know, that kind of that slick, um, 
that slick version of um, of the uh, like just the the photocopy of the cardstock. Oh, uh, so right now I'm I'm also using chameleon markers, which these are sort of unique. Um, they sort of have this color thing. You can kind of see I'm holding it up, and it can kind of you'll see as I start to see how it's light, and then it will start to get darker. So that's kind of a really cool effect. When I first bought those, though, I thought I there is a marker on the market that I I've been dying to use, uh, but um, because I would love to have a marker, and I forgot the name of this marker, but it exists. But unfortunately, it's even more expensive than Copics, and that's, <laughs> you know how much Copics are, and these are even more. But I would love a marker that you can kind of almost use like a watercolor, where you can, if depending on the pressure, it's lighter and you can and go a little darker. And to a certain extent, alcohol markers can do that, but but not, not to the extent that I would like, because it would be nice just to have like a blue marker, and if I could kind of go light, like you would watercolor and this, and the more you overlap, the darker it gets, that would save me from having to keep switching from other marker colors and everything. So I'll have to, I'll have to find, find that. Um, but I kind of I kind of got off on a tangent there. Back to, um, back to the, uh, um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, we were talking about that, the kind of that sketch cover. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're okay, you know, you, you'll probably be okay with drawing on, on a cover like that, but you probably, if you're, if you're putting it out for other people to color on, like if you, then, uh, you, you might want to, you know, do like a Bristol, Bristol cover. Like say if you wanted to print something out, well, not even a sketch cover. I don't know. Do they have, um, this, if they don't make these, this would be a good option for people. But so they've got the sketch cover where it's just basically the logo of the comic and it's blank and you can draw a cover on it. But I, it might be cool for people that might not necessarily be artists, but I know those adult coloring books are super popular. At least they were. I assume they're still fairly popular. But if you could just do a line art drawing of the cover and then uh, on a paper that people could go in and use their, their markers to color in, I think that would be a really cool option. Does anyone know if that exists? Oh, okay, so so Tim says, I want to try the Tombow ones. So I actually had a company that reached out to me and I didn't I didn't get back to them, but they they had sort of a Tombow kind of knockoff. And I don't think Tombows are um, are alcohol. I could be wrong. But um, but a lot and I don't know the colors and stuff they have. I, I, I'm not sure. Um, I just wasn't sure if that was kind of a review I wanted to do because I couldn't really compare those to Copics. I guess I could bu go buy Tombow and then compare these off-brand to Tombow, but that's not really what I've done. Um, so, you know, and plus they, they, they didn't want to send them to me totally for free. They were going to give me a huge discount, like 90% off, but it's like, I don't know, if you want me to review your product. I mean, not, not that, not that, I mean, because like... Who isn't sending me the markers? I'm waiting till they they release them, then I'm going to buy them. So I'm not opposed to buying, you know, markers on my own and reviewing them. But if somebody wants kind of me to do a review, I kind of expect that they would send me send me some of the markers, you know, without paying. Even though that was a pretty big discount, um, because there's a lot of value in in taking the time to make a video and talk about the product and everything like that. And, uh, you know, so I think, I think it makes sense for them to send, to send, uh, send some of the actual product without having to pay for it. So I didn't really go back to that, respond to that, but, um, so I've never really used the, the Tombow markers. I don't know. I just don't know if they're the same kind of markers. I think they're more, I think that might, I think Tombows would be better for like sort of your, your, you know, coloring book type thing. But I could be wrong. I mean, people that use the Tombos, let me know. I mean, are they, what are the pluses to them? But I, I don't know that they're alcohol-based. They're probably like, I don't know if they're like a water-based or whatever. But I'll have to give, I, I've used them before a long time ago, um, but never like with a full illustration. I've just bought a few of them just to kind of use for one thing or another. Um, but maybe I should give them a try. Um, yeah, Tim says they are water-based. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. So. So yeah, I couldn't really compare those to the the Copics, but you know, it might it might not hurt to find a project that, that with those water based. Would... Oh, so oh, are you are you saying that the Tombos? Uh, so because they're water based, the you're probably saying that the Tombos work more like watercolor. Okay, so yeah, I can see that. I I, I, I like the idea. The the ones I'll have to look and find which what they are. But like I said, they're super expensive. But they they look like the alcohol base, and they might be alcohol based, but they are a little more blendable. Or that you know you can do 
a little more with the shading because one th I, I don't know I've looked at the Tombow it looks like their color it looks like they're a little more vibrant um, which I don't I know some people might like that I um, I don't want my stuff to be so you know uh, so vivid when I'm doing like a, a illustration like this so but I'll, yeah maybe I'll have to try that I have to look into the combos and see um, Okay, uh, so MR Comics M2 is that, are you, I don't know if you're referring to the, the Tombow, but um, they say, I have, but I recommend you not buy them. So I don't know, I might have to go further back in the chat to make sure if they're, I don't know if they're talking about the Tombow or not. Not all of them though. Okay, so I'm gonna, I don't see if that's in reference to something else. But anyway, so kind of back to the drawing. Uh, again, as you can see, I'm using a number of different markers. Um, and yeah, I decided, you know, give this guy sort of a, more of a orange look to him. Um, and just using whatever markers I have here again, the chameleon, kind of the color changing markers. It's kind of a, ha I mean, it's, 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 it's sort of a gimmick. I mean, I can do some cool stuff. Like, like I said, kind of that sort of light to dark with it, but it is, it's kind of a pain to kind of have to hold it up and have it, you know, to get that effect but but it is cool and and the markers even if you use them straight out the box without having to use the blending thing they're they're pretty nice the the tips are a little smaller um so they don't hold as much i mean you can't get as much on the, like the brush tip they have a brush tip but just because of the nature of it when you put that cap over it you have to do that i think they have to be a little shorter than the actual like longer brush tips that you find in like a copic or whatever so um so there's a little give and take with those. So Double D E says, um, D and E, sorry. I've used some of those watercolor markers before. Only a few really work well though. Some colors just don't seem to want to work. Others leave a marker stain behind. Okay, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And sometimes, I don't know as far as the stain, if you mean, cause I, you know, a lot of people, the reason why they like Copics or alcohol based markers is because they don't have that streaking effect which I understand, but sometimes to me, I, I like sort of that streaking effect because it kind of, I can get different, you know, it, it, when you're getting that streaking, you're getting a little darker color over a lighter. And sometimes I would like that because you can get sort of that. Basically what I'm looking for is a watercolor look with alcohol based markers. So um, I will have to kind of keep searching and, and you know, if I ever, if I decide to make the investment in these other markers, and I'm sorry I keep mentioning them because I don't remember what they're called. Um, but I just saw them advertised and it's like, whoa, those are super, super pricey. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe, I wonder if I can get just a small set of them to try out and do a review because I'm really curious how they work. But, uh, yeah, we're getting, we're getting a little close. I mean, I got a little more work to do here, but we're getting close to wrapping it up. So if you guys have any other questions in regards to kind of what tools you use, um, you, again, we're talking about digital versus traditional. I'm not, not necessarily in a combative sense like a uh, one is better than the other because I use both but I just want to know sort of the pros and cons of each so that you guys can make up your own decision what you want to do um, whether if you want to go digital traditional or kind of both and I would recommend you know playing around with both and, and you know I wouldn't you know my personal opinion is because uh, I remember when Inktober you know I don't know if it was so much this year, but the year before, there was a big thing about people were very upset that they, you know, that they couldn't, not that they couldn't, because you can do whatever you want, but, but the general rules specified, I think, uh, that you should probably work in traditional inks, and a lot of digital artists were upset about that. But even if I, you know, even if I switched to totally doing everything digital, for a challenge like that, I think I would just want to kind of, you know, for a change of pace anyway, just try out uh, inking traditionally. I think, to me, I think that's the whole part of it. It's not saying that digital's bad or that there's something wrong with it or, or even that you can't do it, but I just think, I think the spirit of Inktober, in my opinion, and I didn't create the thing, you know, of course that's a Jake Parker joint, but I didn't, I mean, but for my money, I think, you know, I think if you're going to do Inktober, I, I, you know, I would, I, I think it should be traditional, but I, again, I don't want to get involved in all that controversy. And it's not because I, I prefer traditional. It's just, you know, 
I just think if you, I, I think it's good to, if you are a digital artist, it's good to kind of change things up, at least for just a simple challenge, you know? And there should be something different, there should be something, you know, for people that work traditionally to, well, that might not be as, as <laughs> easy a transition because I think some people that do work just totally traditional, they might not even, there's a big learning curve with some of the digital stuff and they may not even have like the computer set up or whatever and maybe that's one of the reasons why they work traditional. I know a lot of artists that are kind of like, they just don't don't want to deal with that. So it might be hard to do the opposite where it's like, hey, you're a traditional artist, let's just do a challenge where we try digital. That would be kind of cool though, if, if, we, can get, if we can get people that are just sold on traditional or digital to kind of go one way and then the opposite. In a way, I don't know. So here we got, uh, let's see, uh, double D and E. Did I read this one? I've used some of those watercolor markers before. I few. Of the... Yeah, that, sorry, I read, that. I read that. But if you guys got, if you guys got some other questions, because uh, we are, we are kind of uh, getting close to the end. I'm pretty much wrapping this thing up. Um, so any more questions? Let's see. I'm with you. Uh, Cameron Dillon says I'm with you. Jake Parker started the challenge. Is better for traditional. Yeah. I agree, but I don't want to start any controversy. So I think if, if you want to do if you want to do it, you can do whatever way you want. But I just think the spirit of it should be you know trying to work work uh, traditional inks because I think I, I just enjoy I really do enjoy inking something traditionally. There's something about it to me, and it's it is a skill. I mean, it's not it's it's what certain things are you know certain things are easier to do digitally. But, you know, just to me, it, it takes a lot of practice and skill to be able to, to master a brush, you know. And it doesn't have to be a brush. If you use a quill or if you use uh, microns or whatever. I use microns for straight lines, but I, I do really like the line weight that you can get from a brush or a brush pen. But I, I really would, if you're not used to using those, that's a, Inktober is a good uh, opportunity to kind of practice using brushes because I've, I've had so many kind anytime people see me especially not just the brush pen but when they see me actually actually using like a an actual brush and ink um, and I guess I should talk about that so I use for I use usually a Winsor Newton series 7 or if you want to go a, a less expensive route Kopman watercolor brushes are great for inking um, so th those and sometimes I a lot of times I'll use just the Kopman instead of the the Winsor Newton which they're both made by Winsor Newton, but Cotman's sort of a watercolor off-brand. But, and then I use, my preference for ink is Deleter Black, number four, which is a matte, or if you prefer glossy, Deleter Five. So that's kind of what I use. But anytime I see, anytime people see me using the brush and ink, they're always sort of in awe by the control you can get with that. Um, so it wouldn't hurt to kind of practice with that. Um, Double D and E says, I can't wait for Inktober this year. It gives me a better practice with inking, especially since I started practicing using a brush and a pot of ink. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, there, to me, it's just, you know, there's something, something really cool. To me, it's like therapy, just inking traditionally. So yeah, now I'm about to wrap it up. I am just gonna add some highlights with this uh, Sino gel pen, um, just on some of the metal and just kind of the that maybe the flex of his kind of scaliness where the the sun might be bouncing off that. You gotta be careful when you're adding the white because you don't wanna you don't wanna add too much white like on like dull things like some of the clothing and things. But it, anything, you know, like I said, the scales I think would re in that like that leather strap would kind of create a little bit of a highlight. But don't go too crazy on that. That would be my recommendation recommendation when you start um, adding in your highlights. But yeah, I'm about to wrap everything up. So um, I, yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone in the chat. Again, let me know even after the fact if you want to leave a comment after the chat's over. Um, if you like this format, it's not going to be the format for everything. I'm still going to do the same stuff I used to do, but I want to start doing more of these. And uh, it seems like I got a decent amount of people in here. Um, and even the fact that I just got super chats, my first super chats, that's super awesome. So. Um, so this might be a good time and maybe I'll experiment with some other times during the day because I'm pretty open um, and maybe we can get some different people in and give other people an opportunity to be in the chat. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is super fun. I'm digging doing it. I do want to, I really appreciate everyone in the chat. I appreciate the super chats. I appreciate all the comments, but I just like, 
I like this idea where I, I kind of pre-draw a sketch. Uh, I just run this thing and then I can go in the chat and I can talk with you. We can talk about the illustration where I can be a little more attentive to the chat while not having to spend to so much time, you know, watching the drawing and I can, you know, I can interact with you guys quite a bit more and you still get a drawing out of it because really what does it matter to you if I'm drawing live or not you're seeing the same thing anyway so thanks everyone in the chat I really do appreciate it and we're gonna go okay so here is the piece I did this is my creature design for today and I want to do more of these because these are fun I like doing this stuff live I like talking to you guys in the chat and uh, and yeah, it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to do more of these, but we're going to do some other content as well. I've got some other things coming up, some marker reviews and all kinds of cool stuff that you come to expect on this channel. So, But the, the, the general thing that I'm trying to do is just get more content out. So if I, can, if I can add more content by also adding these live streams, then I'm going to do that. And it seems like a lot of you guys are digging it, so, uh, so I will continue to do that. But uh, next time I see you, it'll probably be a little different format. But until then, I'll see you guys later, and that is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Silkworks on social media. Do you like making comics? Then go to Silkworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.